Hello, Fearless Fam. Welcome to another episode where we shed light on topics most like to keep in the dark. This is your host, Chuby, and today's elephant is a level five elephant. We are going to be discussing the topic of grooming, and I don't mean pet grooming. <laughs> As you know, January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and there is a lot of components to human trafficking, like the aspect of grooming grooming a person or a child and i will get into all those details but before we get into that how is everyone doing i hope you're enjoying your weekend or enjoy your weekend leave your comments below what you did or what you're going to do um i know it's another monday i hope you are doing well and yeah let's begin but yes what also prompted me to want to talk about this um topic was the fact that i was watching instagram videos of some people that i admire who are trans and some who are non-binary people like me and the comments that were under some of these videos were horrendous and one of the comments that i kept seeing was the word groomer they were using it as in like an, an insult you know like it's a slur word basically to at least the trans community and the non-binary community, which got me questioning these people making these comments. I was wondering if they actually knew what the word actually even meant. Um, the fact that they think that the uh, trans and non-binary community are grooming children by being themselves is absurd to me, honestly. I can't even... I don't even know why they will think this. It's not like they're making these videos to target children. These folks are literally professionals. Some are teachers, some are therapists, psychiatrists, and their job has nothing to do with who they are. I mean, sometimes, yes, they are themselves um, part of the LGBTQ community. So therefore, sometimes being in, the, in, in, in that profession, they might want to help someone. But that does not mean that when they're making these videos is to target children. That makes absolutely no sense to me. So no, they're not groomers. They're professionals who are LGBTQ+, and they have a profession of whatever it is it may be, and that's it. They're just sharing their knowledge. That is it. That And it, I, honestly, it got me super freaking frustrated and annoyed that these people were bullying essentially and targeting the trans and non-binary community by using this slur word as an insult and it just makes no sense but i digress let's begin with the definition so the term groomer or to groom or grooming in the human trafficking world means the process a human trafficker uses to identify and ultimately control someone for the purpose of trafficking them. But what does that look like? Traffickers typically identify someone who is vulnerable and has a need. They initially come across as friendly, attentive, but that is a tactic to gain their trust. Learn more about them and uncover their vulnerabilities. They fill the victim's needs by showering them with affection, attention, gifts, and false promises. Anything to hook them, right? They isolate the victim and then, ab then the abuse begins. Traffickers demand sex as a repayment and will use fraud, force, or coercion to assert control over their victims. What are the possible warning signs? information by homeland security does the person appear disconnected from family friends community organizations or houses of worship has a child stopped attending school has a person had a sudden or dramatic change in behavior is a juvenile engaged in a commercial sex act is a person disoriented or confused or showing signs of mental or physical abuse 
does a person have bruises in various stages of healing is the person fearful timid or submissive does a person show signs of having been denied food water sleep or medical care is the person often uh in the company of someone who to whom he or she defers to or someone who seems to be in control of the situation where they go or whom who they talk to does the person appear to be coach on what to say is the person living in unsuitable conditions does a person lack personal possessions and appear not to have a stable living situation does the person have freedom of movement can the person freely leave where they live are there unreasonable security measures not all indicators listed above are present in every human trafficking situation and the presence or absence of any of the indicators is not necessarily proof of human trafficking so with this information i just share with you the comments i've read on these videos under the trans and non-binary people make no sense they think that they're doing something by using it as an insult or a slur no makes makes no sense to me again i know that these people are trolls and i understand that they're doing that on purpose and yes i understand that they're trying to get under our skin because they too don't understand what's happening and i get that but it still bothers the hell out of me and i guess they accomplished something in a little bit but hey here i am doing this um episode so what can we say about that right so to continue let's explain what other way can grooming occur it can be in person stumbling upon, upon you in public and and then noticing that you're alone frequently and it can also be online they can notice you aspire to be something like a dancer a model etc and they can use that to their advantage by pretending that they are either a photographer or someone in the industry wanting to scout you for your said talent and that's how they start grooming you online whether online or in person groomers can you tactics like pretending to be younger giving advice or showing understanding buying gifts giving attention taking them on trips outings or holidays also here are six common grooming behaviors that every parent needs to know especially online and i say online because yes parents may control who they hang out with in person and their time limit outside but when the child comes back inside the house and they're in their device you don't know who they're talking to and even though you do have some parents do have like um the device where they can see what their child is doing you know we've been there done that kids are very tricky they can you know hide certain things or mask it as something else but yeah they could get targeted especially if they're feeling alone and you're not aware of that Uh here are the six common grooming behaviors. Uh forming relationships, uh testing boundaries, uh touching, intimidating, sharing sexually explicit material and communicating secretly. So obviously the touching one will might be obviously in person, um but the other ones can occur online. Um especially when they're like, "Oh, here is a picture you know a sexual whatever picture and then they're like keep it between us right or don't tell anybody things like that I honestly do not take the word groomer lightly especially to insult someone i've been an advocate and an activist to end human trafficking for the last maybe 5 years even before my podcast started and the more you inform yourself and the more you learn and share the better this the better this world will be honestly but before i continue let me give you a brief history as to when and where did the word grooming in the human trafficking world was coined 
The concept and use of the term grooming gradually emerged during the 1980s with the growing recognition of cases per perpetrated by extrafamilial acquaintances, offenders of sexual exploitation of children. Fast forward to 2023 and people are trying to use that as a slur. Um, yeah, how ridiculous is that? And clearly these people are trying to bully the gay community. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I get that. And all we could do is just keep informing everybody and letting everybody know that obviously the trans and LGBT community, anybody in it, it's they're not trying to groom children. If you do not like the content of someone move it along if you personally do not agree with what's happening then you need to check with yourself and wonder why do i feel this way is this something that you yourself have a problem with i mentioned this to you before in in some of my episodes but it's true if something bothers you you need to um internalize that for example, the word groomer, obviously I wouldn't want people to think I am grooming a child or anybody because of my content or because of how I look or X, Y, and Z. So yeah, I internalize that. I know why it pisses me off or why it bothers me, but you need to figure out not being part of the LGBTQ plus community, why it bothers you. That other people are being authentic to themselves, are being true to who they are, and it has nothing to do with you. Yet, you seem to have a problem with them using their own platforms to educate other people who might be confused, who might be lost, and they need someone to look up to. Another trans person, another um, non-binary person, you might not see yourself in any of the... Um, social media and any of the media out there and you're like wow this person is identifies as i do you know how awesome that feels to a child a person you know again i digress let's continue with the information i do have a 411 with chubi of organizations coming together to end human trafficking and some of these I have mentioned them before because I do advocate for them and they bring so much to the table and it's amazing how far these organizations have come and helped the to end human trafficking. So the first one is the Polaris. Polaris is a nonprofit of non-governmental organization that works to combat and prevent sex and labor trafficking in North America, founded in 2002. The A121 campaign is a global 501 nonprofit, non governmental organization that works to fight human trafficking, including sexual exploitation and trafficking, forced slave labor, bonded labor, involuntary domestic servitude. Uh, founded in 2008. My favorite organization is Love 146, is a US based 501 nonprofit international anti-child trafficking organization works to abolish child trafficking and exploitation through prevention and aftercare while contributing to a growing abolition movement founded in 2002 not for sale works on the ground and in mainstream supply chains to target the root causes of slavery but yes i hope you check the i hope you check these out if you're interested in learning more about them um and how to end human trafficking for yourself if it wasn't because of these people coming together and having a goal obviously i personally do, do not think anybody should be sold or to be forced to do anything they don't want to do um so if you do check any of these out please let me know which organization um, you actually like for yourself and be like, okay, I'm going to support this organization. But I do not want to end this episode without reading some quotes. You may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know.
William Wil Wilbur Force. I like this one because it's for those people that live in their bubble and they're like, oh, it's not going to affect me. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, crap. The problem is that many believe this to be a third world issue. But it's right here. I was forced into a cult as a child and sold again and again here in the U.S. I am able to function only because of the services I received from No More Tears. They saved my life and gave me a life of safety, peace, and love. I wouldn't have survived otherwise. By No More Tears, a nonprofit organization who their goal is to empower survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence. And yes, please know we no longer use the ter term third world. We now use the term developing nations. But this quote was from 2019. And my last quote, it is not enough to know what is out there. We have to begin to ask what are the demonstrated outcomes in reducing human trafficking? Megan Morris. Fearless fam, I hope with this episode you learned something and I hope you share this video with someone. Every day we learn something new. Every day information changes. The information I just gave you right now, like today, might, have, might change tomorrow. In a couple of months, who knows? All we can do is keep learning. I have been an advocate for human trafficking even before my podcast, like I said earlier, several years ago. And the first human trafficking organization that I stumbled upon was Love 146. It popped up on my screen on YouTube. And from then on, I try to learn everything I could. And I understand that some of you might be wondering, but Truby, how are you helping? Or how can I help? Honestly, the first step is always informing yourself. Gain some knowledge. Learn everything you can about the subject. Learn who are the people running the organization. Check their lives or join a virtual Zoom meetings. Read books on it. Watch other YouTube content. You know, go to every page they have. Go to the actual page. Um, watch out for all the signs of human trafficking, of someone being manipulated. Make sure you understand the risk of social media as well. Everything you learn, you can share with other people you know, so they can to be aware of this. It takes people to care about something to make it a movement. So yes, Fearless Fam, I am helping by spreading the word. By letting people know about human trafficking, by making sure no children go through this. This video, someone will be watching it. By now, I hope most of the population have heard what is human trafficking. But every little thing counts. Every video, every information, every page, anything out there can help. This $150 billion that this generates needs to end. We need to put, put that money towards something better, like the planet, right? Um, I just want to say thank you, Fearless Fan, for watching another episode. Um, this is episode 24. That means 124 episodes. And that means a lot to me. Remember to share and comment your thoughts on this. I want to hear all about it. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I want to hear from you. Follow us on Instagram. Where I share literally 99% of the information. Like I share more there because it's an easier platform for me to work. And you know me and technology are not friends. But... If you want to chat privately, you can email me at trubygiro at nofiltersnofearstudios.com or send me a text at 954-300-2013. Please be safe, stay alert, stay healthy, share this information, share with anybody. And like I always say, stay fearless, everyone.